Well, hello, dear viewers, and welcome to Level Up Reviews. This is Wolf, and today we will talk about original video animation based on Wizardry 1. Let's jam! Wizardry was a huge deal in Japan. Many comic books and light novels came out based on Wizardry. In February 20, of 1991, Wizardry anime came out. It is based on Wizardry 1, Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord, and it is around 50 minutes long. It is made by collaboration of Shoichiku Fuji Company and TMS Entertainment. Anime is directed by Toshi Shinohara, known for directing Guren Lagan and some of the Inuyasha movies. The story itself does not really change many events, although it does at some things. It is written by Yu Teroshima. And I have to say, it's simple, but executed pretty well. The anime starts with party of adventurers fighting through the monsters to find the chest filled with gold and jewelry, after which they go to drink in the pub. Here we are introduced to our main heroes. Alex, who is voiced by Keiichi Nanba. Hawkwind, yes, that Hawkwind, although later on we find out he's not an elf and Hawkwind is supposed to be an elf ninja. He is voiced by Genda Tesho and Shin, voiced by Toshio Furukawa, who also voiced Shin from Fist of the North Star and Piccolo from Dragon Ball. They meet Morgan here, who tells them that monsters from the lower levels are moving up to the higher and higher levels, and eventually they will break out of the dungeons and start attacking the civilians. By the way, can I point out how great the character design is here? I mean, what happened to modern anime? These are what real adventurers would look like. Not this. Why can't modern anime have tough looking men in it anymore? What happened? Character designs are done by Satoshi Hiroyama and Yasuchika Nagaoka. We also learn from Hulk Hogan here that adventurers are not interested in defeating Vernam and getting the amulet. They prefer to stay on the higher levels and gather up some loot. Our heroes are really not that much different. The only difference is they're stronger than the others, so they can go to the lower levels to get better loot. Eventually, they go back to the dungeon. Here they encounter a lot of undead monsters. But mage named Juza appears. He destroys the undead. He is voiced by Ichiro Nagai. He is accompanied by his disciple named Albert, who is voiced by Yuku Shiyoya. Juza explains to our heroes that Verdnam is planning to break thousand-year-old seal, which is contained by an amulet of Trevor. This will destroy the world. In fact, half of the seal is already broken. Shin is interested about how Juza knows any of this, and Juza explains that him and Verdna used to be friends and serve under Lord Trevor. What's more interesting is that even though our heroes just got told that world is about to end, they are not interested in fighting Verdna, they just want to gather up more gold. I mean, what's the point? What are you gonna do with that anymore? But they are going to level 9, so they will accompany him till there. And like in the games, they even use Blue Ribbon to access the elevator. On level 9, they fight demons. I have to say, monsters look pretty good. They are designed by Jun Suami, who did a lot of illustration books for wizardry. They fight all these monsters to save Elven Woman. Her name is Sheer. She is voiced by Keiko Toda. During the battle, men dressed like a jester named Fleck appears. He is voiced by Ryusei Nakao, better known as Voice of Frieza from Dragon Ball Z. He is pretty tough. He even manages to turn how Queen's arm into stone, and stone condition, as you know from the game, is no joke. I hate when my characters get stoned. Our heroes fight Fleck, and Shin manages to kill him. I loved how much Fleck hemmed it up. 
Great performance by Ryusei. After Fleck is defeated, Juza heals Hawkwind. I think Shir has most interesting plotline. She is looking for her lover, named Randy, who was looking for a sword called Murasama, the strongest sword in the game. But apparently if the common warrior will use it, sword will take over and make him lose his mind. After hearing her story, our heroes decide to follow her. There are also a bunch of dead adventurers all around and Shir is wondering if it's fine to just leave them here. But Shin says that they will come back for them and take them to Temple of Kant. As I said, there are a lot of references to the original game. On level 10, Verdna appears as a hologram and warns the party not to go any farther. Verdna is voiced by Kenji Utsumi, who also voices Ra the Conqueror, so you know the main villain's gonna be tough. Here they encounter Kenshiro, I mean Randy, who is controlled by Verdna. The sword made him completely lose control over himself. Sheer tries to reason with him, but Randy is way too far gone. He even manages to cut Shin's hand off and breaks his sword. When Randy is about to kill Shin, Sheer casts Tilt Away. This is an incredibly powerful spell for advanced magic users, so she must be very strong. This destroys Randy, after which she sings a sad song, mourning her lost lover. Shin's hand is restored by Juza, after which Shin takes Murasama, since his sword is broken. And here I thought only advanced samurai class could hold Murasama. Maybe Shin is a samurai? Shir does say he is the strongest samurai, so I guess he is. I don't know, he looks more like a warrior to me. Finally, they confront Verdna and his vampire lord henchman. Verdna easily beats back our heroes and even manages to wound Albert, who is at the verge of death. Alex is also wounded by Vampire Lord, but Shear is a badass and of course she casts Zilwan spell which affects all the undead enemies. Vampire Lord does survive this, but he gets distracted enough for Alex to finish him off. Juza, of course, heals Albert, but unfortunately, this drains all of his powers, and he dies. While this is happening, Verdna manages to break seal on the amulet. Sheer casts Mehman's spell, which protects the party. Shin uses Murasama to kill Verdna. At the end, our heroes stand at two graves. One is for Randy, and one is for Juza. Apparently priests at Temple of Kant could not revive him. Maybe he turned to ash? So basically they buried him with the amulet which lost all of its powers. In all honesty, OVA was pretty good. I expected a lot worse. Really, it is worth a watch if you have an hour. I don't know what else would you ask for anime based on Wizardry 1. Plus they tied in Juza and Sheer's story pretty well. Although rest of the cast is not the strongest, I guess Shin does have some personality, and I guess you have to have Hawkwind, who is just a quiet ninja type. Not much is revealed about Alex, he could have been missing from this story and I don't know if much would have changed. Minute I saw the elven kid, Albert, I got scared that he would be one of those annoying comic relief characters. But honestly, he was not. In fact, to be honest with you, Albert's presence made Juza's death more meaningful. He really loved his master. All in all, I would give it a watch if you love adventure stories and especially if you're a wizardry fan. I hope you all enjoyed my short video today and have a wonderful day. And shout out to my brand new subscribers, George Bowers, Jan Patrick Clark Sr. Cow T92, Egocopter, Tommy Ida, XX, Spawnmaster XX, Doom vs. Evil Dead, Sylvan Cousineau, Ravenside, Paradise Gaming, Garrick Brazil, Anti Citizen 2501, Cameron Wade, GL Dark Spider, Team Triangle Junior, Stefan F. Wade's Wars, Chris CHG, 
Netrag44, Nick Todd, Jason Harlan, David Tibats, Javiso Gaming, Konstantin Kudratiev, Sergio Rezio, David Cleveland, Benjamin Lewandowski, First Impressions, Brian Smith, and all the rest of you whose names unfortunately I do not see. Thank you all for subscribing and welcome to my channel. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment. Thank you very much.